Hey guys, here we are at Spartan. This is Curtis Iovito, uh, one of the partners at Spartan, and one of my friends, one of my favorite friends, and they put out a new pen, which caught my eye, so I had to stop and get one of these. And they've also put out some new knives, so I'm gonna let Curtis tell you about it. Well, I know I'm talking to a writer, so why don't I talk about the pen first? Okay, absolutely. Okay. So, uh, several years ago, uh, Mark and I used to make an aluminum pen, and it was, okay. uh, it had the, the, the back of it was like a V42 dagger. It seemed like a good idea at the time, and they sold great, but it was just Mark and I working the shop by ourselves, right. and we had, to, we had to make a decision. Are we gonna be pen makers, or are we gonna be knife makers and obviously we're not, we, we want the knife route but we always wanted to make a cool pen um, I designed a pen several years ago I think I took it to the USN show in Vegas sold them all forgot to hold on to one for myself so I eventually redesigned it and that's kind of what we're looking at here oh, so, I love it. I love so uh, it. we're doing bolt a few action. different versions it's a bolt action uh, every piece on the pen is titanium to include the internal parts I guess minus the uh, M9000 right, insert that's the cartridges and the spring, the spring. Probably, and the spring. Yeah. The spring. Other than that, everything's titanium. Sweet. Um, they weren't easy to make. No. And we reached out. Titanium's not easy. No. To and we reached that. out for some help. We thought, hey, it's a piece of circular rod. You can buy titanium and rod. How hard can it be? But I wanted it to, to be unique, and I want you to be able to hold it. So we placed these scalps all the way around it to allow you to grab it. Well, live tooling in a Swiss machine to do that scalping. Rob does use a Swiss tool. Yeah, you got to have some pretty talented folks. But anyways, we designed a pen, came up with it. We're calling it the Graffi, which is Greek for writing. It's a root word of graffiti. All right. um, you know, I like that. We always joke when we make new products, especially knives. The hardest part is coming up with a cool name and sheaths. So all you sheath makers out there, you know, God bless you, man. <laughs> but, uh, now, most knife makers are not sheath makers. I no, that and we're not. Um, but we're really happy with the pen. Um, it's got a good monolithic clip. I love the clip. I was um, checking it out earlier. It's a bolt action. Beautiful. But we, we, I designed it to make it ergonomic to hold on the bottom. We've got a, a large scalped ring around the bottom that allows you to get your fingertips in there when you're writing. Yeah. Um, I was checking that out. You know, I joke all the time, the knife has to be sharp, pointy, and have a handle that interfaces with the hand. That, it turns out, pens ought to be able to be held with a hand, too. Imagine um, that. And there's a lot of them out there that, that don't not. do that. Yeah. And my prototypes didn't do that either, so I had to go back and re redesign them a bit. But we're, we're really happy with the Graffi. It's, um, oh, yeah. We don't know the pen world we know the knife world and that's who we're used to working so with get this up here right here. so uh, we're learning as we go but we think our first swing is pretty good get it to focus there we go yeah i like the colors sure. and then we're doing mokutai as well which is, I'm sorry, this is titanium Damascus. Okay, that's is what we're calling it. Yes. Yeah. But it actually, is, it looks great. We're really happy with it. It's just more of a higher end version of the pen. Let's see um, if I can get this. So right now we're doing four versions. We're doing it straight, what we're calling raw titanium, and it's anodized blue, bronze, and then we're doing the titanium Damascus. I think later down the road we're gonna do some custom things and look at what we do well and try to apply it to the pens. But well, I've still got my chopsticks that I bought in 2000. Oh they yeah, still look just like they did when well, I bought them. So that's great. So that's a new Graffi pen. Uh, we're pretty happy with. Um, you asked me to pick a knife and talk about it. Right. Um, so Thomas. what I wanted to talk about is uh, I think a lot of people know by this point that we teamed up with K-Bar 2019. Right. They're our business partners. Um, we were friends before that. Right. And uh, it just it was a perfect match. They make combat knives, so do we. Right. Um, it's perfect. It's they, very complimentary. Yeah, and they've been around 120 years. So they, they've <laughs> got this stuff figured out. So um, we asked them to, to, to work with us to develop some knives. So we, we went to a knife designer and we heard about this guy named Bill Harzi. Yeah, an obstinate guy from Oregon. Yeah, and if, if so you know we've been working with Bill Harzi for years and I, I think every, most people watching probably know who he oh, is. Yes. But uh, he developed three new models for us, a fighter, a Nesmuk, and a Kukri knife. But I, I want to talk about this one specifically. You know, I'm a retired soldier. Right. Uh, we live near Fort Bragg, soon to be Fort Liberty. Uh, I apologize, folks. Yeah. Um, so we created a we created a fighter. 
So uh, Bill Harzi designed it for us. We said, hey, listen, we want a general purpose combat knife. And if at all possible, if you could like put your input into there, make it look like a Spartan, but kind of make it look a like K-Bar as well, we'd appreciate it. He said, oh, is that all you want? I said, yeah, you know, just whip it out, Bill. That's a, that's a big of an order. But he did it. He created uh, His kind handle. Of the handle he's famous for. And then the, ha the blade still nods to K-Bar. Yeah, it, yeah, it's a nod to K-Bar with the fuller in there. But people, are, are, they have a nickname for it already. We call it the Spartan Harzi Fighter. They're calling it the Pine Bar. Half Pine Land Cutlery, which is our, the company we formed with K-Bar. Uh, and then, you know, the bar off of K-Bar. So it's got, they're calling it the Pine Bar. Okay. And uh, yeah, kind of a neat name. It is. So uh, but that's it. Um, it's made to be affordable to soldiers, right. to folks in the military. It's a big thing. You don't want it too high end. For yeah, everybody. right. I mean, there's a lot of folks, and I've said it before, they come to our shop and they know the name of every knife. Right. They know how we heat treat and everything else, but they can't afford a knife. Right. It's understand. I, I fall in that category myself. Yeah, if, you're if I could, I'd have one of everything you make. Sure, if you're an NCO and you've got three kids, yeah. I mean, it's like having locusts in your home, right? They're, they're eating money and food. <laughs> so uh, we hope this will uh, help some more younger soldiers get some of our knives in their hands and use a, a good tool that will serve them well. So that's the Spartan Harzi folder. You know, we're at Fort Bragg, kind of the home of the Airborne, and we got a lot of folks in airborne jump status. So we wanted a sheath that you could jump with that you didn't have to worry about. So uh, we made an ejection molded sheath that has uh, secondary retention along with a strap that will really hold that in there. So you get it in there twice. So it's, it's, it's mechanically locked into the sheath. And then, of course, you've got a strap to hold it on there to make it extra safe. Um, we always joke, name, naming knives and cheese are the hard part, but we think we got this one right. You oh, see, I love, I, love you, the, I love the release. You can hear the tactile click oh, yeah. as it locks in there, and it doesn't rattle. So it's tactically kind of smart and uh, safe to jump with, but and you're not going to lose your knife. So. And I love that. That's one of the things I love about this part. And if y'all haven't heard of the United States, it's a small company in North America. Uh, they're doing great things there. So. <laughs> So, and then finally, finally, this is a knife you asked me to talk about. Right. Um, I know you're known for bushcraft, survival, practicality, um, surviving in the wilderness. Um, Doing a lot of urban survival stuff lately, and this one caught my eye. Sure. So it, it, we call this one the Alala. Um, we designed this, uh, I think it was about two years ago. Uh, it's a shorter fixed blade knife. I uh, made a 1095 Pro Van. Uh, canvas my car to handle. Love that. Um, I know you like it because they're easier to sharpen, uh, yeah. especially when you're outdoors. Yeah, it's sharpen on a river rock. Right. You know, sometimes a short blade, you know, about the size of a, a pocket knife is all you really need. It is. Um, you need a lot of weight unless you're, you know, hacking your way through a jungle. Sure. In my world, it's a deciduous rainforest, so it's mostly open underneath. Right. So I, um, most of the time, I just carry one knife in my camera and right. my notebook. And it's lightweight. It's lightweight. You, you could literally slip this in your front pocket. And I'm um, not a spring chicken anymore, so the lighter the weight, the better. Well, me either, brother. <laughs> But you know, it's the same thing with the sheath. We wanted a good sheath that locks. Absolutely. But we also wanted secondary retention. But we didn't want to make a large, bulky sheath, so we added an IWB that actually flips up a little bit of pressure and locks uh, locks around the okay. base of the blade. Now, we'll be honest with you, we get quite a few phone calls. What's this thing for? It's, so uh, whenever I get a chance to show people, I like to let them know that that has secondary retention. So we've got a mechanical lock, and then you've got a secure lock that goes over the knife. So I mean, that, that's never coming out of there. Right. So if you're rock climbing, you're out swimming, Absolutely. whatever you're doing, it, it's not gonna fall out. And then it allows you to simply drop it down out of the way and mechanically release it and pull it out. So that's what we call that the Alala. And that's part of our, our silver line. Uh, I've had a few of your gold line knives over the years, and we'll get more later, but I think for now, my budget's more, sure. the silver line's more budget friendly for me. So I think it's, I think these are gonna be the two that I walk away with. I'm gonna have to have these two, especially the green. <laughs> yes, I love that. Well, thanks, Brian. It's great to see you, man. Great to see you, too. Yeah. Thank you for the interview. Thank you for the 